Okay, measures of variation is 3.2. So as you see here, it said one of the most important sections in the book. So we are talking about variation. So think of the word vary, like V-A-R-Y. Vary means how different they are. Differences. So if I say my kids vary a lot from each other, that means that they're a lot different. Or my kids do not vary much. Do not vary. Their qualities are not varied. So basic concepts of variation would be range would represent variation. And then standard deviation. You're going to see that word a lot. And another one is variance. The range is max minus the min. Range is easy, easy, to, easy to compute, but isn't as useful as the other measures of variation that we use that uses every value. So since the range only uses your max and min, it doesn't consider everything in between. It only considers your max and your min for variation. Okay, standard deviation is our next one. So its um, symbol is a little s, and it has a formula. So it's a square root of the sum of x minus X bar, so do y'all remember what X bar is? What is it? The mean. X is one of the data values. And N is number of data values. So the sum means you are going to um, do a, the data value minus the mean and then square it. And you're going to add it to all the data values minus the mean squared. So this is going to have to be done quite a few times. And then n minus 1, so number of data take away 1. Another formula, which looks a lot longer, would be n times... The summation of x squared minus the sum summation of x parentheses squared. Okay. Standard deviation is the most useful, and it's uh, usually the most important. Measures how much the data values deviate away from the mean. So deviate and vary, they mean the same thing, how far it moves from that mean. The value of the standard deviation is usually positive. It is zero only when the data values are the same number. It is never negative. Larger values of S indicate greater amounts of variation. So if, you're, if your standard deviation is really high, that means that your data values are a lot different from each other. But if they're all the same, it equals zero. If they're close to being about the same, it'll be a low number, but it's always positive. The value of S can increase dramatically with the inclusion of one or more outliers. The units of S, such as minutes, feet, are the same as the units of the original data, data value. So if we're talking about uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, that's your data, then your standard deviation will be whatever you come up with, and then you'll also put that unit on there. Okay, so S, the little s is our sample standard deviation.
Okay, the next one is not like an O, but with kind of a tail on top. This is called Sigma. And this is your population or standard deviation of the population. I'm going to put population standard deviation. And we're going to abbreviate standard deviation with SD so we don't have to continue to write standard deviation. So anytime I write SD, you'll know what that means. Or we'll use the little s, lowercase s, or the sigma for the population standard deviation. Okay, so just a reminder about rounding. We are going to uh, carry one more decimal than our original and try not to round until you get your final answer. We don't have to write that back down, but just a reminder. So procedure for finding the standard deviation. So step one will be find the mean. Step two, you are going to subtract the mean from each individual data value to get a list of deviations. And then square what you found from number two. Add all your squares together because that would be the sum. Do the summation. And divide the total from step one by n minus one, which is one less than the total of data values present. present. And then find the square root of the resulting step. So remember what it was. It was S equals square root of the sum X minus X bar squared over N minus one. Because there's more than one X value, we can't just put this in the calculator until we find out what that summation is. And then we can use our calculator to do that. Okay, so we're going to compute this by hand at first. Okay, so here's our intervals. All right, so let's look at our data values, and they're all listed down here. We just want to find the range real quick. So what is our largest data? value. 98 and our smallest. Okay, so 98 minus 65. So our range is 33. Let's go ahead and write minutes on there. Okay, um, and then it says, what is the mean? So, didn't we do this last time? Do you remember what the mean is? Can you have to look at y'all's last one? Or do we need to put it back in the calculator? Let me see if I have it in there. Yeah, I think I do. What'd you say? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and the reason we needed that mean is because of our formula says each X value minus the mean, and then you're going to square it. So we're going to do this on each one, 98 minus X bar, 91.25. So subtract them. Uh, I guess I should write a little smaller so I can actually. So it'd be 6.75. So I want you to do that on each one. You don't have to write it down like this every time. You can just find out what it equals. So go ahead and subtract them. Subtract each data value from our mean. So I'm going to pause it so y'all can do that. 
Okay, so you should have that first column done. So this is the first column. So now the second column is actually squaring what you got from subtracting from the mean. We're going to write that full number down because we don't want to do any rounding because that could mess up our final value. Okay, so go ahead and square those. Okay, let's see how you did. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so here is whenever you square the difference between each data point and the mean. So those are the numbers. So the largest one is at 65. It's an outlier, right? Okay, and then you add them up. And that's what you should get. 862 and a quarter. Okay, and then the next part is to actually plug it into the formula. Okay, so we'll plug in this goes on top and then the n minus 1. N is 12, so we'd actually divide by 11. Okay, so let's find out what that is. And round one more than our original data values, because after this, we're done. So round one more than our original. So take the square root of that fraction. Okay, what do I get? Anybody wanna answer? Go out on the limb. 8.9. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put that down here. 8.9. Okay, all my work is on that other page. So, all right, let's keep on going. Okay, let's use the second formula. Okay, so this one. Might be a little easier to do by hand. Let's see. It's in summation of the x squared minus the sum of the x divided by n, n minus 1. So that means I need to square each one of these and write them here and then find the sum of the x's and sum of the x squared. So go ahead and do that. See if we're, we get the same answer. Let's see how y'all did. Here's where I'm at. Check your numbers with mine. And then I plugged in, okay, the summation of X is here. Summation of X squared is here. N is 12. So that's where we're at. So we can put that into the calculator. And you could just put that, the whole thing in there. What'd y'all end up getting?
Okay, what'd y'all end up getting? 8.9, so same thing. Good. All right, standard deviation of a population. That's the one that I talked about, just giving y'all that uh, symbol sigma. It looks like a P turned on its side. So to find the standard deviation of a population, we would need to do h dot point x minus, do you remember mu? What is mu? Remember x bar was our sample mean? What's mu? Yeah, population mean. And then the uppercase n, what do y'all think that is? If little n is a sample, total number of sample data, what do you think big n is? Yeah, it's population. How much, how many people are in the population, or how many points, data values are in the, that population? Population, standard deviation divides by n. Oh, it tells us right here. The number of data values in the entire population. The sample standard deviation divides by n minus 1 independent data values. Otherwise, you will underestimate the value of the population standard deviation variance. Advantages of the first formula is that it reinforces the concept that standard deviation is type of average deviation. So you find average by taking, some, taking a sum and dividing by how many add-ins. Keep on rolling. Advantages of the second formula. Easier to use when you must calculate standard deviation on your own. Wasn't that quite a bit easier looking at writing that down compared to, I didn't even want to write down all that. <laughs> so that is the advantage of the second formula. Eliminates the intermediate rounding er errors. Introduced with the exact value of the mean is not used in the first formula. This is the formula that most calculators and programs use because it requires less memory rather than one for every value in the set of data. Okay, variance is our next um, information or uh, vocab. The variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. In order to find variance, you have to know your standard deviation. The way that you calculate it, calculated by squaring Squaring the standard deviation. So it gives us the notation S squared. So remember S is our sample standard deviation. So if you square your sample deviation, then this is your sample variance. If we square our population standard deviation, then we get our population variance. The sample variance is said to be unbiased estimator of the population variance. And you always want some kind of unbiased estimator. Unbiased means it's not influenced by anything else. So you want an unbiased uh, value. Okay, example one, find the sample variance of the intervals between the eruptions. So to find our sample variance, our S squared, we take this value right here and we square it. So I want you to go back on your calculator, find that value and square it, but don't do 8.9 squared because that's going to be quite a bit different. Well, I guess it's really not. Yeah. So our value that we put in the calculator 
was eleven. And we're going to square that. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to square it. Let's see how this works. Out. Okay, where how? Second square. No. Okay. Here, I'll do this. Can I do that? Will it be the same? Okay, so if I do this square, oh, okay, it does come out. I thought it might round it a little. Okay, good. So that is 78 point. We want one more than the original, right? So it'd be 78.4. But then if I use 8.9 squared, how does that compare? Yeah. So it's a little off, two tenths off. One serious disadvantage of variance, the units of variance are different than the units of the original data. So the units of variance are squared. All right, y'all are going to hate me because we have instructions on how to do it with the calculator. You can find your standard deviation and variance using the calculator. I guess you shouldn't hate me because I am sharing that with y'all. All right, so remember how we have our, um, let's look back over here to those eruptions, this. Put this in if you don't already have it in. You need to put that in. And we are going to use our calculator to find our standard deviation and variance. Make sure all those values are in there. There should be 12. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing, that one var stats. And it tells us right here. So go to stat, calculate, one variable stats. Calculate. And it tells us, oops, look back at, um, let's see, look back at this one. See what it gives us? It gives us a summation of X. Look at that. Then it gives us a summation of X squared. There it is. Then S of X, that is our sample standard deviation. Our theta X is our population standard deviation. And then it gives us the rest of those. No, yeah, that would be it. So it doesn't give us the um, variance. So look at what it tells us. Same thing that I just said. Sample standard deviation is the S of X. Sigma X is your population standard deviation. To find your variance, copy down the entire decimal from the appropriate standard deviation, then square it. So that would be that number 8.8536738 and square it. And that will get your variance. Okay, so use the samples describing the amount of lead in the air to find your sample standard deviation and your variance. No, not that. So go ahead and do that. Plug those in. And you can go up to that L1 and just push clear, enter, and it'll clear it out. Here 
And once you have it in, go to stats, calc, one variable stats, calculate it. Okay, so it gives us S of X. Did y'all get the same thing as me? Yeah? Okay. So that is, if these are two decimal places, I need to go three decimal places on my answer. So 1.914. And then to do my variance, I need to take the whole thing. 1.914203925 and square that. So 1.914203925 squared. And so that's for your variance. So it's 3.664. Okay. So we are going to be done with this for today. We will finish this on, on our next class.